Good evening, this is the Oscar Expert here with Brother Bro. It's time for a review of The Five Bloods, new film from Spike Lee that just hit Netflix, the first major Oscar movie of 2020. Or is it? I think a it is. A question that we're here to speculate on. We'll get to that after later. Review. Yeah. This review is spoiler free, but we do discuss themes from it, and sometimes I don't like when people discuss themes before I watch a movie. So if that's you, then just be warned. The film is about four black Vietnam veterans who go back to Vietnam to look for their commander's remains as well as to uncover some gold and to reunite as a group. This movie didn't quite go down like I expected, and I think that Definitely most not. people will have that experience. Originally, it was written with white soldiers, and then Spike Lee and his writer came in and wrote it for black soldiers. But I actually had a really hard time like wrapping my head around like what the movie was trying to be overall. And I feel like a lot of people are going to have that same experience. I finished this film, and I was like... I didn't know what, what to think or feel about it. I really didn't know how to feel about it. I wasn't sure like what angle to like go at the film from. And I wasn't sure like how profound it was or not. I like, I, I was honestly just kind of at a, like a loss. I felt a little bit like that, but I got the sense that if I watched it again, I might like it a little more. It's not that I have a problem with movies shifting tones. Like I literally do not care if your tone is inconsistent. I just want to be similarly engaged throughout the movie. And that's where I felt like the film like ebbed and flowed. Like some scenes I thought were like really well directed. Some scenes were very tense. There are scenes that are more in tune with the character's emotional experiences. There are scenes that are more into the action. And there are scenes that I'm not really sure what they do. I think a lot of the film's tone is touching on that brotherhood sentiment, and I think it really does want you to feel that throughout the film, and like uh, the kind of the emotional beats that you go through are, are attached to that. And some scenes I wasn't sure exactly that that's what it was going for, but uh, when I look back on some of these scenes that I was like a little unsure about, it seems that this is the through line for the film. Can we be a unit again? Or are our, like the demons in you know one character in particular of past like gonna prevent him from doing that? Prevent him from being able to be there for his friends? I feel like I didn't really want that from the film though. Considering it's a Spike Lee film and considering the premise of black soldiers going back to Vietnam, I almost was expecting something like a little more or like a little deeper maybe. I didn't feel like the predominant feeling that I got from the movie was that it was about brotherhood. I didn't and feel that either, but that's like how I'm reading I, into it now. I mean, I think that it could have like focused more on like their relationships and bouncing off each other. I could see the different movie in there that doesn't have the Spike Lee twist on it. And I felt like that was kind of a mediocre movie. Yeah, um, that's how I feel. But sometimes the style was like very good. And sometimes it felt a little unmotivated. Like there are some times where the cinematography looks really great. And there are some times where the cinematography looks fine. But I don't know if it feels like it is being motivated by anything. Like yeah. The scene, like I, I, There's I'll, almost I'll a lack of out, direction in some scenes. I'll point out the scene where they're digging up gold. Yeah, like, that's what I was that thinking That felt yeah. like they... It, coverage. It felt like coverage, yeah. not like, mm, how do we like make this really effective? Something that I sort of felt in Black Klansman, but not as much is that Spike Lee and his cinematographer, like their synergy is on and off. Like the yeah. cinematography is good looking. Yeah, but yeah, it's good in this Is film. it like, you know, synergistic with the voice of the movie? Yeah. Do the Right There's Thing like is couple. really on Do point the right with thing. thing. Like, that's why the cinematography in that movie was so perfect. And like, I don't, I just don't feel like he's topped that in a way, even though it was mm -hmm. so long ago. The score... I think you agree with me on oh, this. Oh yeah, I'm, I'm, I'm uh, gonna rant a little bit about the score. I really did not like the score. I actually yeah. like quite despised it. I heard the five minutes released before the film and I was like, all right, so either this is going for like that kind of irony and it's hearkening back to like that kind of idealism and that time that didn't exist because obviously Vietnam, like where in that story do you have patriotism. I honestly think the feeling that the score gives you is like the genuine sentiment of the film, which is where I say this film is about like love and brotherhood. The score also evokes country because of the horns and the snare. Like, I don't know how you can get you know, past that. And it evokes it in like the wrong way. Like the scenes here, 
The music's over here. I don't know if it felt like it was trying to be a patriotic thing, but it definitely felt like I don't know, it used the same exact palette as like other war movies. Like it used the, sn- the snares yeah. and the horns. Or like, and was it unintentional? Like it just didn't feel like it fit the movie. And there no, and all the best all. scenes didn't have music. And a lot of the scenes yep. that didn't work for me had music. And a yep. lot of the music was like at odds with the film. And there are a lot of people who are praising the shit out of the score. I think some as people far, like that Avengers shit though. They just yeah, like when no, it's that's like, exactly. I was like, this is Avengers shit. This is Marvel shit. Like it's playing where it doesn't need to. It's kind of telling you how to feel about stuff. And during the action scenes, I didn't feel like it worked. It took me a good while to like start really caring about the characters. I would say maybe like 35 minutes in is when uh, Delroy Lindo's character sort of latched onto me harder. And I was definitely able to involve myself more in the film as it went on. It sort of finds a stride. And as an adventure action thing, it's good as a commentary movie. And the more I think on it, I think, you know, it may be very good. It's about the relationship that black people have with a country that they're constantly like in service of and they're not benefiting from it. Like, does it go that much further I don't think than it went that? there. Well, it definitely went there. Like, that's what, it, it tells you in the very beginning that that's what it's no, about. No, I know, but it didn't go beyond just establishing that, like, this is the situation of the soldiers. It was also about, like, how war lingers within, you know, the people. Yeah, Sometimes, but, again, so, that was okay. literally said by a character, that, like, in the most explicit the, way. Towards the end of the movie, when the character said, literally yeah, he's says like, he's that, like, you know, I was like, war, no, no, like, no, no, It no, lives no. on in the... And it was like, yeah, that's obviously what I, the movie's about. That was about. the most cringeworthy. But again, like, war lingers. Like, that is a statement that I could have understood that before watching the movie. Like, the movie didn't give me an interesting perspective on that. Like, it did show me people who were going through that. But I don't know. I don't feel like I had a, an interesting takeaway on that topic. Well, I think if you're going to look for a takeaway, you have to relate it to, like, this sort of African-American experience. Where it's like, you know, black people are carrying a burden on their shoulders generationally, which, you know, is obviously right. very relevant and that makes sense. But it, again, it, this is something that I knew the movie was going to be about. Yeah. And, but the movie didn't, like, expound on it. Yeah, I didn't feel like it went a whole lot further than where like, I Like, yes, it, it has that. broken people in it. I, I was, like, I definitely liked it the whole time. Like, I liked the movie for sure. Yeah. And there was, there's a lot of really good stuff about it. There are some scenes, like, there's a scene towards the middle that's very tense, Um, some of the scenes in the last half, I think are really well done. Delroy Lindo is phenomenal. Yeah. He's phenomenal in this movie. Yeah. He's the best part about the movie. He was the only thing in the movie that was like consistently amazing. Like everything he did. Where he goes with that pain. That's like what deepens the movie for me. The character did feel like it fell apart a little bit. The climactic moment he had was stilted. The sort of spiritual climax. Yeah. No. Yeah. I, I would no. say no to that. And that's because- what I, where I mean the moment he has is telling for what the film is about. The bloods being, you know, this. Can they be this? Or are the ghosts of their past preventing them from being this? Like, Jonathan Majors is probably the second biggest character in terms of that he has, like, the biggest arc. You know, he has the most character to go through. That was great to see. I mean, yeah, Jonathan I mean, Majors, I love seeing like, this film. I'm on the Jonathan Majors train. After like, last, black, last man black Man, and, yeah. and then here he is again. He nails it. Not his grappling with his father was good. I mean, that was great. But, yeah. like, where the character goes, it's like, mm, didn't care as much. The other bloods are really not as developed. There's one that has a sort of side story going on, which is sort of interesting, but the conclusion of it feels tidy for no reason. I guess in a film where I'd say the direction was a success for me is where I feel like I know what the director wants me to feel. That's a totally subjective thing. In this film, I didn't get how the music was playing into it. The juxtaposition of like action kind of thriller movie with when it was being really serious. I didn't know what the main theme was going throughout. I might just be speaking for myself on this one, but it was just hard to tell for me. I'm actually figuring out what I think about the movie right now. Um, Yeah, I'm a little conflicted too. One thing I did latch onto the film that I really liked was there seemed to be a theme of Delroy Lindo like wants something to believe in. He wants someone to guide him through life. And I think he's pointing out that there's actually a lot of struggles to find what that is. Not that there haven't been struggles before, because again, like Malcolm X, Martin Luther King, Two different voices that Spike Lee sympathizes with as we see with Do the Right Thing. He's okay with the fact that there's multiple different viewpoints uh, within black communities. He sees that this makes it difficult for people who are struggling to like be led. And we can really empathize with that for the character. Like even as a country, we don't know where to go. He shows people who are, who are looking for it and who are really like desperate for that. 
I think that's the point he's making with him being a Trump supporter as well. It is a movie about people who like don't know where to look to and their desire for this treasure also stems from we should be given something like as black people and as veterans like we should be given something in this war reparations reparations it also sympathized with like the fact that the people who were fighting on the opposite side are kind of in a similar scenario all veterans are fighting for a war that they may or may not believe in like there was a point where they're going through the woods with their guns and you hear the Vietnamese soldiers like talking about their families and their subtitles so that he make, Spike Lee makes sure that you like hear what they're saying, which I thought was really interesting. Mm. You might really love this movie, but there's a lot of people who are going to feel a little weird about yep. it because it is kind of weird. It's also not a movie I could recommend to everybody and expect that they'd enjoy it. I think a lot of people would just be like, don't really know what that was all about. But at the same time- it's not even because they're missing that much in it. It's because it kind of is like a messy movie. But at the same time, it's not not entertaining most of the time. It has some entertaining scenes, yeah. It has like enough action. I think that it kind of will keep most audiences afloat. I'm gonna give it a seven, and what gives it a seven over a six for me is Del Rey Luna's performance. I'm weird because my experience with this was a seven, but I feel like I'm kind of sure that if I watched it again, it would be an eight. I'm gonna give it a seven, just because my this review sounded more like a seven. I feel like if I rewatched it, it would be a mixed bag all over again, honestly. But I think this leads into Oscars. This movie's getting a massive amount of Oscar buzz. It was before the release, and the reviews kind of lived up to that. Like I mean, for a Spike Lee movie, like these these reviews are really good. Yeah, I don't see it being as liked as Black Klansman. I think nope. Black Klansman was a more likable movie. I definitely more agree people with that. are going to be on the same plane with that one. Yep. But this movie, I think more people are calling it a masterpiece. Like there's more people who think it's like that fucking good. Even by the end of the year, like I have no idea what yeah. people will think about it or like how it'll be remembered. Yeah. It might age very well. Like people can go back on Netflix and watch it again. Best picture. I think that it is in and okay. because enough people like it and it is important. Most reviews that I'm seeing are like eight and above. I think that's enough. Now audiences might be a little more torn on it, but I think there's so Definitely. much respect for Spike Lee. He just came off an Oscar win. I think that people understand that this movie has something to say, and that's what will get it in. From my experience watching the film, it does seem like this could put enough people off that despite the director's status, the actors being amazing in it, and them being able to nominate it in several categories, it might not get a Best Picture nomination because people just can't get behind it. Hollywood and Irishman are examples of films that I just wasn't sure how people were going to exactly react to them when I first saw them. And then it seemed like it was clear that there was enough love for them that they were going to get nominated everywhere. But also, it can get director. Like, if it gets picture, if it's big, if it lasts, if it hits every award, like, it could get director. Like, the Golden Globes are probably going to nominate it for director. I feel like it's also just easier when a film comes out to be like, yeah, this is getting nominated. Also, that, Cole, like, will people see it? I'm just going to ask that question. How do I know that, like, the average person is going to know about the film, is going to be interested in it? Yeah, I can see I it. really don't know. I can see how people who aren't, like, into Spike Lee, the movie might not be on their radar. We're just not going to know until the end of the year. But obviously, critics are loving it. Critics will hype it up. Academy will get Critics' Choice nominations, it. I think. Delroy Lindo's Oscar chances are very good. I think that he's definitely the protagonist. He's definitely the main character. And he belongs in lead. But lead is more ambitious. But I think he still could get it. That's because the they can put him in supporting. And if they do, he's probably going to win yeah like honestly i know that i haven't seen any other things but he's probably gonna win if he's in support he will win he's if he's in support freaking good i think he's a really strong contender wherever he's placed if it gets picture and director it'll probably get a screenplay but i will say the original screenplay category is looking quite crowded and this isn't like a screenplay movie as much as some others are so we'll have to see about that editing like if it gets director and stuff it's gonna get editing like it just is gonna get editing will it get sound i actually don't know it could, know. but I don't think it was like the most incredible sound. It wasn't Dunkirk 1917 shit. No. It will probably get score. I know we said that we don't yeah, like the score, uh -huh. but I still think that there's enough buzz around it that I, I think it will get score. That's the thing. Cinematography, I feel like it, it... It's on the fence. It's on the fence, but I'm gonna... I would call it at a no right now. Your yay or nay for best picture. Oh, yeah. Yay. I'm at a loss, but I'm gonna say... Because it can get director and editing, Justin. I understand. I, I honestly don't know. I'm going to say it's like 50-50 right now. But you'd have to put it on your top 10 right now. Just because... I would know. put it on my top 10 right now because it has a better chance than other movies that I haven't seen that no one's ever seen. Yeah. 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 Stay tuned for the prediction video where you can see more of what we think.
Thank you for watching. Thank you for subscribing. Who are your five bloods?